Today, John, we're going to speak about um, some negative articles that have been published in the, the newspapers by Ailish O'Hanlon, Colette Brown and Sinead Ryan. Ailish O'Hanlon was, was a journalist you admired, but you seem to have changed your mind. Can you tell me why? Well, she, 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 it's from the Narda Bar and she writes fairly uh, critical type articles, generally speaking, in the Sunday Independent each Sunday in the main part of the paper. Uh, but uh, recently, uh, Brendan O'Connor now is a new editor for the Sunday Independent magazine and various uh, writers that they have that are sort of, is supposed to be independent and are, are able to pen a col column and make it interesting, etc. or controversial, normally controversial. Uh, so this age, O'Hanlon, I wrote an article in the Sunday Independent of the 21st of May 2017 mm -hmm. uh, which was highly insulting of the Catholic faith and the arch former Archbishop of Dublin Dr John Charles McQuaid. <coughs> I'll just read out uh, the first item that she came out with that was quite insulting. Uh, her article is entitled Free Speech and Sacred Cows. Now, nobody objects to free speech providing it's respectful and tolerant mm -hmm. of other people and other faiths, not least the Catholic faith. Here's what she says. Free speech that is not free love. Now, this explicitly commits the state to safeguarding in very common, the right of the citizens to express freely their convictions and opinions. The original wording was overseen by a man in a frock. Well, how would you think a man in a frock would be? Well, a dress, obviously. Well, you might think he was a transvestite. Yeah, well, Perhaps you might, a, yes. A member of the gay community. Yes. Right. A man in a frock. And that's a card to Asia Handel. That's Archbishop McQuaid. She doesn't even give him his title, John Charles. By the way, not Emma de Valera, too. So naturally, this right was immediately qualified by provisions that the rightful liberty of expression should not be used to undermine public order or morality or the authority of the state and to forbid the publication of indecent material. What Punnock and Hearn gives with one hand, it takes away with the other, but theoretically we're free to say whatever we want. Well now, it's not a recipe for disaster to say whatever you want. This is the media in Ireland <coughs> in the 21st century. Uh, feel free to insult the Catholic and Christian faith and get away with it without being prosecuted. Uh, for incitement to hatred. Here's the next thing that she says in this same article entitled Free Speech, which is practicing in such a negative way. There are some people who think, for example, that socialism is the answer to all society's problems, or that a bit of bread and wine turns into the actual body and blood of a Jewish carpenter who died 2,000 years ago and even that now she was on about some other old nonsense about some album about a singer that I've never heard of. But it's the fact that she refers to the Catholic faith in such a derogatory and insulting and diabolical way. Um, words fail me to describe the horror that I read of what she wrote, which is unusual because I don't read the Sunday Independent magazine as a rule. Okay. And there was other articles by Colette Brown. Do you have another article there about Colette Brown? Yes. Colette Brown uh, <coughs> is a, a noted columnist in the Sunday Independent and um, or the Irish Independent and the Sunday Independent at times uh, with an anti-Catholic uh, Agenda. Agenda and opinions. And she has a title, Public Protest Only Reason Nuns Won't Own Maternity Hospital. 
the public protest that she yapped about uh, was that about 200 people initially objected to it and then they could only muster up 2,000 people that marched and these were all uh, uh, women's movements, the women's, um, uh, the women's um, association or the women, women's aid, uh, what is it, the, the, the women's association which uh, Francis Fitzgerald, the present Minister for Justice, was a member of. It's a, a quango uh, paid for by us and uh, Martin in this. So they were all with vested interests in uh, seeking abortion. Uh, their numbers as regards the population wouldn't be of the order of about 1%. So 1% uh, is able to dictate a car to Colette Brown and she calls it a public protest. And so there's another lie, that's what I call it. And uh, so she refers to the nuns that provided the first hospitals in this country and gave sterling service to the health and welfare of the citizens of this country before the lake of Colette Brown darkened uh, darkened this uh, state with her anti-Catholic bigotry. Um, in the same paper, uh, another uh, anti-Catholic bigot, Sinead Ryan, White Communion ain't nothing but clothes and cash. Now, that's the title of her article. Uh, she should be ignored and uh, as, a, as an anti-Catholic bigot. Uh, according to the last census, one in ten of us have no religion. Many more admit Catholic of the designer variety. No weekly worship or specific belief, only baptism for school entry makes it necessary. However, how different would would this would the skew be if the requirement was banned from schools? The church claims that despite it wanting greater development, treatment, divestment, parents rail against this. Perhaps this is true. Uh, it would mean by extension that preparation for the days out communion, picture the bowl, and confirmation being bring would have to be done outside school hours, say as Sunday school model, or by private classes between parents and a priest. That's what's, that's what's causing the resistance to full divestment. Could it be that parents prefer the lazy approach of teachers doing all the work while they can concentrate on the closing party? Now, to be such a, a ridiculous uh, idea uh, that uh, Catholic schools are a hindrance to this um, anti-Catholic uh, march by the few. At, uh, it's like the tail wagging the dog. Uh, these uh, writers are, have a free hand in this independence. It's a paper now uh, that I would not recommend any person you need to buy because this is the sort of anti-Catholic bitch that one has to has to. Um, unfortunately come across. You don't know what sort of a column you're going to read in that paper that would be insulting to the Catholic paper, to Catholic faith and the Christian faith. RTE is notorious for it. They've given permission to every anti-Catholic bigot in the political arena, uh, particularly Coppinger, a, a, a root Coppinger, an anti-Catholic bigot that's in Dal Ern, as well as the other anti-Catholic bigots that's situated. I think Ruth Coppinger is, um, a lot of people don't take her very serious. Well unfortunately some do that she was elected to that doll and she's on the media constantly with her views that don't represent only a tiny minority of um, anti-Catholic bigots in the country, uh, including uh, the likes of the uh, Claire Daly's and the Wallace's and all the rest of this country that are in the Dáil and the P 
people against proper uh, brigade. Uh, they have far more publicity than their numbers warrant. Uh, it, si it seems to suit the anti-Catholic ethos of the state broadcaster who has the audacity uh, to constantly look for the license fee to be paid to them. It uh, should be withdrawn from them and should paddle their own canoe and spout their anti-Catholic bigot at their own expense, not our expense. Thank you very much, John. Thank you.